And I'll talk about that in a sec, but I, I don't want to talk about me tonight. I want to talk about you tonight. I want to talk about your dream. I mean the big dreams, the bold, daring, imaginative ones you had. The ones you had when you were 15 years old and 18 years old, 20 years old. Because you know what I see? I see people give up on their dreams. And it seems the older we get, the more we give up on our dreams. And you know, talk to any kid who's 15 years old and they know they're going to have a great car when they grow up and a great house and a great job and a wonderful spouse and they're going to be rich and they're going to be successful and they're going to be an astronaut or a football star or a rock star or whatever, right? There's no limits to what they can dream. And what happens along the way? They get out, they go to school, they get out as 22, 23 years old, all of a sudden they take a job they don't really want. It's not their dream job, but they figure it'll do for right now. And then they, maybe they find out about another job, and that's not their dream job, but it's a little more money than the last one. And they meet someone along the way, and da -da 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 -da. all of a sudden there's two, and then there's a little baby on the way, and there's another baby, and then there's diapers and formula and braces and all of those kind of things. And all of a sudden, they take another job that's uh, 500 miles away. And begin, but again, it pays a few thousand dollars more a year, so they take that job. And all of a sudden, you're 35 years old. You're 45 years old. You're 55 years old. And you forgot about your dreams. That's what tonight is, not, is about. I know you heard it's a business opportunity. Nah, it's a dream opportunity. How to get your dreams back. I know this because I like sports cars. Some of you all know me. <laughs> you know, I got a car thing going on. And it's funny, I'll be sitting at the light in one of my Vipers, let's say, and some car will pull up next, and there'll be a guy driving there, and he's got his two, three kids in there in the back, and they'll roll down the window. Hey, Mr. Viper, man, cool car, man, and, you know, rev the engine up. I can't wait. When I grow up, I'm going to get a Viper. And kids say that to me all the time. Oh, you know, I'm going to get a Viper. Now, Dad, Dad doesn't say that. <laughs> he just sitting there behind the wheel, because... See, Dad's already grown up. And he figured out he ain't getting the Viper. He's got the minivan. Hey. Hmm. Right? What happened along the way? You know, because, and it's funny, every, every year they publish the list of the most popular cars. And I see it every year, and it comes out. And I read the list, and it's funny. Now, when I talk to kids, and I talk to a lot of kids, they're, you know, they always like cars. And they're, yeah, I'm going to get a Corvette, I'm going to get a Lamborghini, I'm going to get a Ferrari. And then when they publish this list of the best-selling cars, it's Toyota, Camrys, and Holdens, and Mercury's, and Ford Escorts, and Geo Metros, the broke mobiles. <laughs> right? These are, because, see, these are all cars they make for broke people. You see that? Like the Holdens you got here. <laughs> right? And the Toyotas we got there, and the Chevys we got there, and the Buicks we got there. They make those things for broke people. Now how come when I see the list of the top ten things, I don't see Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Rolls Royce and Jaguar and Bentley? Because they gave up on their dreams. They said, well, this is the car we got. It's room for the car seat in the back, and we can afford the payments. And they settle for a car. And they settle for a house. And they settle for a job. And they settle for a life of quiet desperation. When they could be living a life of joy, challenge, growth, <coughs> adventure.